This is Kim Guzman with a demonstration of my Mardi Gras cowl. The cowl is made in the Tunisian crochet in the round technique. If you've never tried Tunisian crochet or you are unfamiliar with the stitches, please check my YouTube channel to brush up on them before beginning. For this project, I've used the Tunisian reverse stitch and the purl two together. Please practice these stitches before beginning the project. It can be a little challenging, so take your time to learn the stitches before continuing. I've used two skeins of Lion Brand's Hometown USA and a size P double-ended hook. I've used two separate colors, which will make your stitching easier to see. If you're feeling brave, try it with two skeins in the same color to increase the challenge. Please follow along with the pattern which is on my blog. The link is available in the video information below the video on YouTube. If you are viewing this video anywhere besides my blog, such as Pinterest, Google+, Twitter, or any other website, you will need to click the YouTube link to go to the video directly on YouTube to get the pattern. So let's get started. Alright, I am going to begin this project with an Aran weight yarn. I did do the project in a, a super bulky yarn, but I can't get it underneath this camera and still maintain the closeness. So I'm going to be doing it with an Aran weight yarn and a size L hook. And look at that hook. KimGuzman.com. My own special line of hooks. Isn't that cool? This is a double-ended hook, and that's what you'll need, a double-ended. So I'm going to start off with a slip knot, and I'm going to place it on my hook, tighten it, and what you'll need to do for the project, if you're using the super bulky yarn that I used, then you're going to chain 45 here. Uh, if you are using an air in weight, and perhaps an L hook, it would be good for that chain a multiple of three and just chain out but I do want you to chain loosely you want to make sure that this is going to fit over your head nicely so with the super bulky it was 45 chains and that's what the pattern states now if you are using again something smaller then just chain out a multiple of three that will fit around your head. For this project I'm just going to chain out about 27 just so that it will fit underneath the camera and make it easier for me but you will actually chain 45 unless you're using something else and then just multiple of three. Go! Alright here I have my chain and as you can see they're very loose chains skip the first one, that's this one up here. Now turn your work over. You will be much happier if you work into the back horizontal bar, not one of these front ones here, but turn it over, pinch it with your non-hook hand, and insert your hook and pull up a loop. And do that all the way across. Now see, watch it, just pinch it up and insert your hook. Very simple. Now what I want you to do when you are stitching, because this is worked in a spiral continuously, you aren't going to be able to count your stitches the way you normally can. So always count in threes. So you've got three. So don't do anything. Don't set down your work. Don't turn it, because we're going to be turning in a minute. Don't turn it or set down your work. Ex unless you've got your threes. So always count while you're stitching. See one, two, three, one, two, three. Just keep doing that. One, two, three, all the way across. And don't do anything major like set down your work or turn unless you're on three. And that way you will always remember because it is difficult to see your stitches and to read them, especially when you're new. So all you're doing is just pulling up loops. And you see I'm working very loosely. Tunisian crochet is always best when worked loosely. And I am currently using a 6 or 7 inch hook. 
a hook on each end spread out your stitches. Don't try to bunch them all up. That will cause hand crimping. Just spread out your stitches and allow them to grow along the length. But now you don't want them to grow past the hook. So I am going to now turn my work and work these stitches off. Unlike, unlike regular Tunisian where you are limited by the length of your hook, with double-ended Tunisian, you aren't limited. So here we have some stitches here, and let me just make sure they're one, two, three, 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 good. All right, now I'm going to be using this side of the hook. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my work, and now I'm going to work those loops off with a second ball of yarn. One ball of yarn for this side, one ball of yarn for this side. That's the purpose of the two hooks. Alright, now I'm going to begin closing the loops that I have. Now again, what I want you to do is always count those stitches. Always one, two, three, one, two, three. Now, I'm going to take this length of yarn and see I've given myself a generous amount at the end. I am going to place it on my hook and I'm going to pull it through one loop. Just one. Alright, so that, that one is closed. That's number one. Now I'm going to close the next one. Now in order to close the next one, you pull through two. Pull through two pull through two, and again, and you keep doing that. You're closing the stitches. Just close them, pull through two. You see how you're pulling through one color and then the other color. You're actually making a chain along the top. Pull through two. Now, when you get to where you're almost finished pulling those loops through, stop before you pull through the last three. Don't close the last three. Always remember the last three. And leave those loops there. Now, the reason why and I know some of you may have been using the double-ended hook, but you never really knew the reason why you leave these three open. And the reason why is because if you close them all the way to the end, when you start pulling up loops again, they will disappear and get buried. They will be pulled too tightly. This maintains their size and allows you to continue. Now I'm going to turn and I'm going to begin working with the blue again. When you are turning your yarn back and forth, it is helpful if you will watch your colors and watch your strands of yarn. They won't get tangled if you will just pay attention to them and watch them. Now I'm going to continue picking up loops, but remember I'm going to be picking up one, two, three, one, two, three. In my head, I'm just going to be saying one, two, three, one, two, three. Right, so just remember to always do the the threes. Just work in threes. If you if you have to set it down, just always make sure you're on three. That way you'll know where you're at when you come back. And just continue pulling up loops. One, two, three, one, two, three. All the way across. Now you may have to do three or even four times to get all the way across the end of the hook. All, all the way across the end of the chain, I'm sorry. Now, I don't have to do that because I've only done this with 27 stitches. But if you've got 45, you're going to have to do more than one pass. What I've already done, the, the pass that I already did, flip it around, close some more pull some up, 
flip it around, close some more. Keep doing that until you get all the way around. Now, as you can see, I'm all the way around, and I'm ready to begin round two. So what you do is you pull up your strand and make a circle. And this can be a little tricky, so you're just making a circle. You're not going to join it all because we're working in a spiral. You're just going to make a circle. Okay, so I have the yarn, uh, the end of my, the very first stitch is right here. And here's the last stitch. So we're just going to make a circle. Now, this stitch pattern has a purl two together as the first stitch. So the way to do that is yarn in front, insert your hook into two of the bars at the same time and your yarn is in front. And this one, this one stitch is going to be a little fiddly because you're joining at the same time. If you are familiar with knitting in the round, it's that first one that's always a tricky. So I have the yarn in the front here and I've inserted my hook onto the two vertical bars. Yarn over and pull a loop through those two at the same time. What that does is it wraps the stitch and I've just worked two together and it wrapped it right there. There's the wrap and there are the two stitches. Now the next step of the stitch pattern is yarn over. So I've got a yarn over. Hold it there. Now go into the next stitch. This stitch is going to be a reverse stitch. So you come in from the back and go under the back vertical bar. Now if that is too much for you, if you're not quite prepared, you can go, you can go ahead and do a, a simple stitch there. Absolutely do a simple stitch. The, the back horizontal bar, it takes this chain that's on the top in the alternate color and pushes it forward and that's what gives this cowl the dual look of the colors but if you don't want to do that you don't have to likewise if you don't want to do the pearl two together you can just do a simple two together if that's easier for you and then work up to what you want to do later now I'm going to turn my work because my hook is pretty full I'm going to turn my work and I'm going to begin working again with the white and closing the stitches here